Welcome to part two of how I became anorexic and bulimic and how I overcame it. Part one was about how I became anorexic and bulimic and part two, which is now, is about how I overcame it. So I started working in a gym and everyone around me was pretty into nutrition and I was too. I was always into nutrition but I really didn't have a clue about what good nutrition was about. So I found the raw food movement and you know, I couldn't hardly find any information on the raw food movement at all. I went to libraries, went to bookshops, everything, and there was just hardly anything on it. And if there was, I got it and I like, whew, devoured it. So I went online and there was heaps of like raw food forums, and actually quite a few raw food forums, which was really impressive. And I found a couple and I got on there and I started to learn more about the raw food movement. And in the start I was having like cacao and high fatty dishes which for my eating disorder at the time were not good at all. You know, in my mind I was like, this is the way, this is a raw, raw food is definitely the way that I'm going to cure myself of this urge to restrict my calories and to purge. But the high fat version that I had found just did not feel right. I wasn't feeling that much better than when I was eating a lot of shit. You know, I was starting to feel kind of the same, to be honest. Because my carbs were so low, my brain fuel, my carbohydrates were barely there. You know, I was eating these cacao, avocado, you know, creations, which were just full of fat, excitotoxins, neurotoxin, and basically it was leaving me undercarb and not feeling my best at all. So I'm, I'm jumping around with these raw food creations thinking, hey, hang on, this is raw food, and I should be feeling really vital, I should be feeling amazing. And I just wasn't getting that. So I looked around further, I'm like, you know, there's got to be something more to this. I know this raw food thing is the answer, but I'm just not getting, you know, the results that I feel I should be. So I searched around, searched around, I went to a raw food picnic, there was a girl there, she was eating like 10 mangoes in a row, and I was like, you know, she was really glowing, I'm thinking, this sister... She knows what's going on. Something's going on here. What is she doing? So I gave her a raw interrogation and she just, you know, told me all about Doug Graham. Before that, I had only heard of Doug Graham via one of the forums, which there was a guy in there and he was totally writing off Doug. He was hating on him big time. And, you know, when people hate on other people like that, you know, that just for no good reason, you know, the guy is promoting fruits and vegetables. Come on, how can you hate on someone like that? When people are hating like that, then I just sort of think, yeah, you know, this person loses all credibility in my eyes. And they're not trying to help anyone, they're just trying to put someone down. So I researched further on Doug Graham, because he was talking about Doug Graham. He's going, oh, you know, Doug Graham this, Doug Graham that, he's this and that. I'm like, all right, buddy, just put some fruit in that mouth and carve up, will you? So anyway, I looked into Doug Graham and found, you know, the most perfect lifestyle around. You know, he recommended so much fruit. And I was always like, I can't have too much fruit because my candida is going to go crazy, which is totally, totally wrong. It's an excess fat in the bloodstream problem, which I'm going to make a video about, so stay tuned for that. I got a consult with Doug. I went on basically Banana Island for one month, and after that I was like, ah, found the holy grail. Yeah, I did my happy dance. I did my happy dance because I was feeling so vibrant. And for the first time in my life, I didn't want to vomit. You know, I didn't want to restrict my calories. I was seeing my skin clear up. I was seeing my eyes clear up. I was seeing my energy just go through the roof. I was basically just feeling like, I'm just walking on air. I'm feeling amazing here. There is something in this lifestyle. And basically from then on, I just knew that that was it, you know, I wanted to live the fruity, high carb lifestyle. And now, I don't feel guilty after eating, I don't feel like meat and dairy, I don't want to vomit, I don't want to restrict my calories, I don't have dizzy periods or blood sugar issues at all, I don't have this like, inability to focus on things and this almost like feeling like I'm going to faint all the time, which I had before. I was like a mess. I could hardly focus on anything. And that is not the case now. I've got focus. I am regularly happy for no reason. The urge to binge on crap to the point of pain, gone. Totally gone. You know what I mean? And it's all, like a lot of people are like, oh no, no, you know, eating disorders, they're, they're mental, people have got a psychological problem and rah, rah, rah. Okay, that... 
That I really, really don't agree with. Maybe if that person's brain's been glucose restricted for long enough for that many years, they may have got brain damage. I don't know, but possibly. But I'm talking about 99% of the people with eating disorders who actually are just undercarbed. I know this is going to sound like, oh no, no, that's too simple, that's too simple, blah, 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 blah. For most people that is that simple because if you're getting enough glucose to your brain via carbohydrates, then it's going to function properly. If you're not, then it's not going to function properly. That's how it goes. But I hear a lot of people say, oh, but how do you bridge that gap between, you know, you know, wanting to actually nurture yourself and get that glucose to your brain? Well, that can be difficult. For me, it came out of desperation, and I think this happens for a lot of people. That urge to just, you're just like, whoa, I don't know what else to do. I'm at my wit's end. I, I just need to change now. And for a lot of people, that's what does bring them to a healthier way of living. So for me, I had to change or else I don't know where I'd be today. Honestly, I needed to get my head together and I had, and I was even to the point where I had so much pain attached to what I was doing that one day I just went, take a step back, you've got to look at your life. And when that doctor said to me, you know, you're, you're anorexic, your BMI is anorexic and you've got to change now. That was a real wake up call for me. That was huge for me and that was a turning point. And after that, I began to educate myself. I really wanted to look after myself really well, but I didn't want to put on weight. Ooh, didn't want to put on weight. That was, that was it. That was everything. And so when I came to the raw food lifestyle, I'm like, yeah, you know, this, this is going to be it. How can I put on, fruit, on weight with fruit and vegetables? You know, no worries. This will be, this will be awesome. And it is awesome. But if you're coming from a background of under eating, of anorexia and bulimia, and you put on a little bit of weight, if your weight rises to a healthy level, that is healthy. It's just this initial period of adjustment that your body has to go through. It has to balance out. So it's important to remember that. And when I first started, my weight was, you know, fluctuating, as I've said in other videos. But I knew that I felt so good. I didn't have this binging urge anymore. I didn't want to you know, vomit, I didn't want to restrict my calories, oh, I didn't have to, because I was just feeling so satisfied. You know, and I was starting to think, oh no, is this working? I don't know, I'm putting on a bit of weight, this might not be the lifestyle for me. But then this other voice came in and said, hey, everything, there's so much improvements, you know, your energy, your digestion, your skin, the need, the urge not to binge or purge or restrict your calories, it's gone. And for me, that was worth so much. I was not going to give that away for some superficial thing as weight loss. And now I'm 20 kilos lighter. I eat all the calories I want. I never, ever, ever cross my heart, sweat it, whatever. I do not restrict my calories ever. The last time I did it was years and years ago. And God, you know, if you want to live an abundant life, then restricting something like restricting real food, nature's gifts, fruits and vegetables, then you're not going to get it. Trust me, you're not going to live abundantly. You're still going to be in this deprivation, diet, merry-go-round mentality. So you've got to step off that and you've got to carve up. So it's all about carving up. I'm just going to wind it up now. So you may have to get to a point in your life where you're experiencing so much pain from what you're doing now that it tips you over the edge into changing. Okay, that's what happened with me and that's what happens with a lot of people. And then, you know, then educate yourself. Follow people who are thriving on the lifestyle. Follow the high carb people. The high carb people are the ones who are happy and energetic and glowing and, and you can have that too. But you have to be patient and you have to keep the carbohydrates up. Alright, so that's my story and I don't know what else to say but I am a different person to what I was five years ago. Completely different. I don't know myself. <laughs> my family doesn't know me. They're just like you have changed a lot. So, so I've definitely found my happy place. I am eating disorder free and you too can be as well. Go for yourself.